okay recording started no problem so we are starting with web technology no computer literacy and in respect to computer literacy today we will talk about the web technology uh, regarding web technology you know right now you people are using web and you are using web more than you are using your printed material or printed documents or books so web platform is this is one kind of platform which is not saturated right till now till day and each and every day the new technologies new implementations new the languages new manifestations are coming and today we will be dealing with something regarding the entry cases involved in this web technology because the first time i already talked to you regarding the software at the same time the hardware and then we talked something about some stray elements like you see the use of endnote software at the same time the different types of software that has to be used for research work and so that was not organized in that sense so a kind of zigzag pattern was there of my deliberation so right now we are trying to make this one much more you can say focused uh, today web technology and then by taking the web technology we will be uh, going to or will be will be delving into the dif different aspects of the software basically we will be talking about the software usage of software and what are the different types of softwares right now people are using for uh, research and what are the different avenues of research how to how to choose the titles and at the same time whenever you are have choosing your title or not title rather the subject the subject that subject can be the mm. a solitary subject that is subject that is fully mm, inclined to library and information science or rather the subjects which are having some bit of overlapping with other um, subjects that is the interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary or rather cross disciplinary and whenever such kind of uh, subject is chosen then what are the different software tools that we have to use and what are the different tools that are already available where you having to pay a single penny Uh, by um, using those open source software so you can use this one and last day i talked about the subscription model as well as that is the ownership model of software procurement and you know it can every day this is rather um, being the demand of the time or rather this is the governing rule the software field that is each and every day they are changing their policies the policies is no ownership rather you be a subscriber just like you subscribe other household things like see cable tv television charges as well as you see the telephone charges like that so this is what this pattern is there but this pattern is so much uh, gaining importance or this pattern is rather been uh, the the de facto standards or rather being the standards of this time because of the piracy itself that also i told you because a particular software whenever the software is rather developed for uh, one individual or rather software developed as a binary and this is the offline mode software which can be run in a standalone machine and it is being seen that people are using that software mm. many of many of the people are using the same software 
uh, in different software just by stealing the keys just by using the cracks or by hacking this one so that's for why the publishers or rather the developers right now they included or they are running their software in the cloud mode and where each and every time the authentication is done in the client in the in, in the cloud whether you are the true owner of the sort true, true licensor of the software to licensee of the software or not and at the same time they can keep their prying eye to you whether you are crossing their free limit or rather you are using their software of your own or rather you are uh, someone other some other one is using that software so with this perspective today we are going to talk about the web technologies so in the first lecture in the web technology uh, we will just try to cover um, the different aspects of web technology and after that we will be will be directed to the different specific software so i'm presenting my screen and here you see this is the presentation let me sorry full screen no manual okay and this one so this is the beginning of web technology uh, i will rather take a kind of uh, narratives of this one or i i will take the liberty of narrating the to this one in a slow speed because you know once upon a time in our akash bani or radio there was one concept like slow speed news and slow speed news is for those who didn't understand the language uh, where the intricacies or where, where there were a lot of lot of um, jargons are involved so i will be taking that mode there's a slow speed news where i want to give you some bit of time so because whenever i'll pause you will it will be helpful for you to think of about what i am saying and you are free to ask me the question whenever the session is going no problem so whenever you can't understand anything you just raise your voice so that we can mitigate the issue instantly or rather synchronously so this is the web technology now web technology is rather a very 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 broader concept and right now if you see most of the software as well as most of the activities that are being used using this web technology if you think your if you think about your banking activities you will see that one the web technology is there the internet banking is one of the example of web technology railway ticket booking is rather one example of web technology like your insurance and all other things that are also the web technology and during this pandemic period this web technology has got its boon and it is considered as a panacea for replacement of the traditional way we use technology so almost all the times people are rather emphasizing or people are web warning us or people are rather uh, asking us to go digital and from where this very concept web technology is important because right now each and everything you do because you are using web technology for a long time 
but might be you are not thinking that one as web technology but as you see you are using Google, gmail for a long time gmail is a software gmail is a cloud based software and you require internet for that one so for web technology you have to have a good um, internet connectivity without internet connectivity you cannot uh, reap of the very uh, potential of web technology so internet is the backbone or network is the backbone for the web technology so this is the first thing so now we are starting our presentation of web technology with this one that is what we'll be uh, going to discuss that is the communication process on the web the communication we made on the web then we will be talking about some bit of web server technologies then a bit of web designing although this is not the class of web designing so i will just tell you that one how we can develop the content for web web designing then the static and dynamic web pages and their comparison what are the static web pages what are the dynamic web pages now what are the different script, scripts available and what are the different types of scripting languages that are available for web technology and what are the popular scripting languages then one thing that is CSS this is known as cascading style sheet used to decorate the web pages used to decorate the uh, web um, pages or rather web applications basic concepts of html document i won't want to say this one right now but we'll say i will say you something uh, about this one that is what html is but we'll be um, talking about php more in the later pages but not the html itself because i think html is a very easy language easy scripting thing so you can learn that one of your own so with this one we are starting our first thing now see uh, our website for our perspective for users perspective what we usually do as i already stated you we are using banking services we are using uh, the rail ticket booking services or rather the holiday resort booking services as well as right now if you want to take the vaccine then also you have to take the help of coin platform or aragoshetu platform so and see and others are like that these are the examples submitting online application so all of you submitted your application online for admission in this course viewing the web content if you want to see what are happening in the globe so you are seeing that one and the web content different sites newspapers then the portals everywhere watching movies and you know uh, because of this geo and the broadband boon in our country right now streaming video is not a dream uh, many people are watching movies on netflix then amazon prime is there then in bengali you have the hoi choi then click then what not even for banking transactions then purchasing goods your very favorite amazon.com then the flipkart as well as mintra as well as super stop and as well as shop clues xyz so you have different types of websites and each and every website is self-contained self-contained in what sense they are not only having the sites the aesthetic concept is there at the same time they have the content at the same time they have the transaction included therein at the same time they are talking with the payment gateways at the same time they are in they have included the bank accounts that you have so that from the wave itself you can go to the bank sites and from the bank sites you can pay them 
and that authentication is done by the bank as well as that authentication is done by the web portal website so the whole thing is the perspective of web technology and we rely and and use the web technology for almost all the affairs even the gauge booking system everywhere so now see this is one one picture where there are several things are there that are being used for web technology you can see these are the icons and for different types of scripting languages as well as different types of developmental tool for web applications as for example this is php and mysql most of you i think you know this one php and mysql these are rather known as rather the twin brothers so mysql is the database and php is the scripting language which interacts with the database and at the front at the user's browser they are uh, fetching the mysql data or the data that are embedded or that are stored in mysql can be manifested or can be phased uh, by using php microsoft.net is also uh, the proprietary um, web application tool or web application language wordpress once upon a time considered as a blog but right now people are using that one for creation of dynamic websites then you have the java many of the sites are running with the java at the back end the javascript then zoomla another wordpress like blog development software and this is the icon for drupal and there are so many and here you see the java python jquery so html this one and xml so these are the technologies that are running behind the screen the screen you see the interface you see whenever you open your favorite browser like chrome or microsoft edge or mozilla firefox at the back end these technologies are uh, working at the background and you see the communication so how do we communicate so next page is the important one so this is what a very simplified view of web technology where we communicate or where the communication on the web is usually done this is how this is the client and this is the server and client is requesting the server and server is replying that one and this is the very simple example of client server technology which is the prime aspect or which is rather you can say the fundamental core of any communication over the web so client and server actually these client server technology this is not new this is also evident or this evidence you can see in your real scenario too as for example as for example if you ask me any question as for example joydeep uh, the day before yesterday asked me that one that is whether the pictures were the pictures i posted in my dp that was made with um, Yes, boss viewer or not? I didn't answer because that was not. Now, see, in that case, Joydeep was the client, and he made a request to the server that is me. And after this request came to the server, there. So this request, whenever a request comes to the server and in between these two, this request, there must be, whenever this request is going to the server here in this blank space, one thing is always happening. This is known as handshaking. So handshaking is one terminology. So just like you see, whenever you shake your hand, you are accepting 
the other person so this handshaking is done once the server is handshaking with the client that is means server is accepting the request then the server finds the reply and finds the information and sends that one back to the client now you are the client and how you are representing that you are a client in web interface in web technology a client is the browser of the user's machine as for example whenever you try to connect with internet you always open your browser and you put your query you write your query in the search box and you press enter or go or submit button so immediately this request goes to the server and from the server if it is available it gives you the reply and it is manifested again in your browser so if the server is busy but if the server is not found you will get that one server not found page not found this one so this is what the communication technology that are being uh, usually seen this is a very simplified view so but the thing is not that much of simple okay so this is what a very simple so client then request then here should be the handshaking then server is accepting your request then server is processing the request and finding whether the information is available with him or not then it is replying and once the reply is going to the brand and in between this this request and reply here you require the internet connectivity that is what is the most important thing for the web so this one so internet connectivity lies in between these two this request and supply here so next is now you see this is your machine and the computer software that is a browser your browser connects to the server and request a page that is http colon www.gwgle.co.in once this request is going to the page and then it needs to understand each other and that is what where the handshaking is being done and the server sends back the requested page now in order to communicate on the web computer slash devices need to understand each other now how this is being possible by making all devices follow the same protocol namely tcp ip that is transmission control protocol internet protocol this protocol is being followed this protocol because your browser whenever it is sending the request this request is going through tcp ip tcp ip is a protocol which takes your query and it changes this one it converts that one into a server understandable form and in the server also the tcp ip enabled software is available and where it is getting decoded once it is decoded then server sends back this one so this tcp ip is very important now this understanding is important this is just like that is my language and your language must be same otherwise you won't understand my language so this is what the tcp ip first now see what we usually do or rather what is the basic model now the same protocol the same thing see url is sent to dns server to obtain its ip address browser connects to this server using the ip address after process this request the web page to be displayed is sent to the client what does it mean your url is sent to the dns that is domain name system server to obtain its ip address then browser connects to this server 
using the IP address. After process this request, the web page is to be displayed, is sent to the client. In order to communicate the web, computer devices need to understand each other. This is made possible by making all the same thing what was written in the previous. Now here it is important. URL is sent to the DNS server to obtain its IP address. Now browser, now okay, uh, let me show you this one. So how it is being done. Now see, I am rather quitting from this one and showing you one example of it. Now see, go to this space that is who is who is the directory where you can get the name of every websites or rather every web addresses registered in the internet and you can get that one that is who is owning that particular site who is having that one and what is the IP address of that site? Now, you can say, suppose you want to go to my site. So what usually it is done? First of all, check. Now see, once you are getting that one, you will get that one that is, the domain name is saptashri.in, register is hosting's concept, this one, registered on, 3-7-2009, experts on 3-7-2021, updated on this, client transfer prohibited, and this is the name server, this one, and you say, this is University of North Bengal, registers, and here you see the raw age data, that is see the domain name is this, registry domain id is this which server is openprovider.com hosting concept is open provider iana id is this so these are rather the detail of the site that are registered here okay so if you want to get that one that is the ip of this one is the who is means who is the owner of this one okay owner now find ip address if you go for this one instant ip lookup what is my ip address now see this one s a p t a r s h i dot in That is what, once you have got your IP address, is okay. Now IP address, it is not actually showing here. Okay, but I am rather showing you my IP. I will understand this one, that is H-O-S-T-I-N-G-E-R dot in. And then login.
domains for God. It's rather it entered with a different posting or login. Log in. Okay, log out. It logged with a different name and where I do not have this one. And my address is something, I my email ID is something different. Oh God. Now see, we have, I'm having two IPs and two, two domains, two hostings. One is DLISNView, another one is shopproceed.in. So suppose you are, if you go to this one, that is DLISNView.ac.in, you will get that one. And here you see the IP address. This is the IP address of DLISNVU.ac.in. So copy it, this one. And then log out from this place. And in this place, paste the IP and enter. See, they are saying this one, the forbidden. So direct IP access is forbidden. So what you have to do, that is what? This privacy error. It is having the privacy error. So, but it won't allow you to enter this one. But this is the IP. IP in what's IP of what? IP of dlisnvu.ac.in. dlisnvu.ac.in. Whenever you are typing this one, it is going to this place. Now, come to this place and see. this one this one whenever url is sent to the dns server and that dns server is this not the subproxy.dlisnv.ac.in uh, it is rather sent to this place from where from where it is obtaining this one, the IP DNS server here, and then it is obtaining this IP, which is the DLIS and view. Then browser connects this server using that IP address. After process this request, the website to be displayed is sent to the client, and then only you will be getting this one. This one is available. Because whenever you are typing this one, it is searching for the IP address of this one. And DNS is one server where for each and every IP, the address is also written. So as for example, this is just like one server, like uh, this is one uh, list like this. That is suppose you can say a table like that. like that you see that is d l i s n b u dot sc dot in and the ip address is 45 dot 8 sorry 8 dot not 8 84 dot 
204.225. So this is now for the second one. Or suppose S A P T A R S H I dot in, you will get another IP address here. Not the same. These IP addresses are different, and this list, and this is kept in domain name server, DNS server, and from where, whenever one address is written, it is finding out the IP, and then it is connecting with that place, and then. It searches whether there is a home page or not, and if home page is there, it is displaying that one to our browser. So this is what is the process of this one from current slide. Yes. So this. So now next is now see. This is the DNS server. This is the source. From this, it is going to DNS server, and ultimately a lot of Um, movements are there, and from that one, it is rather again it is coming back. So see, from DNS server, it is going to the different places. From this place, it is coming back to your server or your browser. Now, there is something like known as IP packets. Now, <clears throat> what are these IP packets? So now see there is a routing table. So this might be a bit of cumbersome thing to you, but IP packets can take different routes. Simple thing is that whenever you are forwarding any request through your web browser, it is rather divided into three. Chunks, three groups. Okay, three groups. One, two, three. That is first one. That is source address. This one, and this one is your destination address, and this is the data. That is source address from which machine it is going. Request where to go for this one. The destination address and what is the data. So this becomes the IP packet. And now it is going to the router. Router means in your case it is not like that. So whenever you are going to the internet, so internet suppose you are typing that one in the Google, so it is going to the Google router. And in Google router, this S A D S so and see the table is there A B C D like that, and it has its own. Hey, go down. Hello, hello. I am in Shilugiri. Te, can you re? Are you coach cover? No, no. No coach cover. No. Today class is going to be very difficult. Hmm. Class. Hmm. Hmm. So now routing table. So this is what. source address destination address data now it is going to your google server now google has different routers there routers means the channels and whenever it is rather getting the packet it is checking that one that is which net and which was the, that is actually from where it has to forward from which place the data can be retrieved easily which one is shortest distance and this router checks that one which are the open ports open places from which the data can be extracted so then it sends the data to different places see this one this places means here you see this one is one this one is tab this one is so a b c d they are rather as getting the information so it is checking this one 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 and after checking this one so these ip packets are taking different routes the shortest routes which one is the shortest route and from where the data can be collected so this is the basic perspective of 
this is not the searching this is as distributing of your data the total information is divided into chunks into different segments and it is forwarded to the router for searching and ultimately whenever this one is coming it is again combining and is being forwarded to the browser of the client and now you see this one see client to web server and web server to communication that is web server to web server two types one is client to web server so your browser connecting to web server and server sends back and web server to server communication you forwarded the data to google but their data is not available in the google suppose that data is available in drtc server drtc server or rather in flipnet or niskear server or in flipnet server now you search in flipnet database so now it is going to google server but from google google is searching the address that is in flipnet and now it is trying to establish a communication between the server kept in intern that is in flipnet as well as the server kept in the google data center and then they are sharing the data and that data is dependent on the data of in flipnet if the in flipnet is allowing you to get the data then google will fetch that data and forward that one to the google repository google data center the cache it is known as cache page google is never keeping that data it is just routing that one that is what i already told you it is rather routing that data channeling that data to your web server so this is known as web server to web server communication you can say that one like this the client to web server means you ask me something and i immediately answered you that one second one you ask me something but i do not know that one i asked tapun another server and tapun told me that one yes this is the thing then i am forwarding that one that is according to tapun this data is that i am not storing that one in my mind or in my in my head so this is what web server to web server communication now next one now see browser to web server this one and here you are writing something and this is the internet and it is going over there and from that one it is going to web server and it is processing whether you are searching for graphic files web pages anything so then once it is identified it is again retrieved and it is then forwarded and that's why you will see there are the two way communications it is going via this way and then it is coming and this one is a single because this is kept in the web server so if the web server is having this one then you will get this one back now next is browsers so see what happens oh god oh god user enters name and password another another way out where you have to enter user name and password then clients user enters name password the client means browser sends the name and password across the network web server uses that password to authenticate user's identity server authorizes access for authenticated identity just you have seen that one when i was trying to log into my hosting guard it was not allowing me to enter that one so i had to enter my username and password through chrome and then chrome send my name and password across the network it reaches to the hosting guard server it used the password to authenticate my identity and then the server authorizes and give me the page where dlisendu.ac.in and other another server is there now 
many of the servers right now they are using this protocol most of the cases is website we are using according to w3 consortia the hypertext markup languages or this one is known as hypertext http transfer protocol hypertext transfer protocol this is the default protocol for accessing the web services or web documents this is the http protocol in http protocol you can write the web pages and the web pages can be manifested or can be seen through the browser but http this protocol is not secure protocol anyone can use this protocol and can go to the server and they can they can they can uh, brute force they can attack it through brute force method or different types of hacking method to get the access of the server and that's why right now most of the servers are protected with this s is rather the secure and this is known as secure sockets layer this is hypertext transfer protocol secure see this one now again i am showing you the example of it now see this one this one this one okay now see this thing department of library and information science and here you see one lock icon is there this lock icon is stating you that one the connection is secure this lock icon because here you see our site i already protected that one with this one that is the https protocol it is a secure protocol no one can enter into the server by breaking the code here because it is encrypted with 256 bit encryption algorithm that is the rsa algorithm so but some of the sites are there where you will get that one this ac is not there as for example i am showing you uh, that is your um, favorite http colon slash slash list links dot com whenever you will be opening listlink.com you will see that one it will say that one the connection to the site is not secure you should not enter any sensitive information like your password or credit cards because it could be stolen by attackers and here check if its site is not secure okay this is given so this site list link is not secure but most of the sites most of the big sites like say g o g l e google dot o dot in if you go there and you are you see this one that is connection is secure now you can ask me that one if i want to secure my site what i have to do if you want to secure your site you have to purchase this one that is the security service and one particular agency the very sign corporation they are there who are using who are selling who are giving you these security services and it works then your server will be very much protected and your website will also be web server will be protected now see secure sockets layer is what this provides a standard security technology for establishing an encrypted connection between computers on internet encrypted whatever is going from your machine to another machine from your client machine to another machine it is always passed in an encrypted form that is no one in between can take the data and decrypt it it provides security capabilities this protocol not only ensures privacy but it also ensures that no other website can impersonate the user's login account 
of our alter the information sent this very sign corporation i told you is the certification authority there are other agencies also is a one certification agency then komodo is another certification agency so if you make your own website if you want to develop your website if you want to go for the shared hosting if you want to go for the vpn hosting if you want to go for the cloud hosting or if you want to have your own server then it will be always better for you to use the ssl now i am again closing this one so closing this one now i am rather coming back to you now here you see i told you a lot but uh, one thing i just right now told you that one that is the perspective com that is a perspective of uh, you see that is make it make it work okay that is the hosting or rather web presence that is web presence so now new slide now how number 1 second one how and i and i how can i make my machine as a server how can i make my own web server remotely remotely this now these two things are important because before proceeding further we need to go for this one now see how can i make my machine as a server this is question number 1 second question is how can i make my own web server remotely this is what is the important one now any one of you is having any idea of it then i will skip this one no sir no 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 pavitra pavitra no shagata no maybe no i can't understand what you were saying actually which one i cannot understand properly what you are saying in this case me so maybe i don't know no maybe means what i am rather trying to say you that is you have one machine in your home right now suppose laptop or rather desktop like that so you want to make your machine as a server right one thing so there are authorized uh hosting platform okay who can make my machine as a make make my machine a server okay then and but suppose you don't want to make your machine as a server but you want to have your own server 
Then? No, I don't know about that. Okay. So now you see what I was actually telling, you know, see this thing, this web presence, this one is not important. And one thing is that I want to make my machine as a service. This one is the first. Okay. Now, what is the necessity? First of all, what is the necessity of making my machine as a server? We can say that one safely. There is no such need. Okay. But suppose we want to make um, one. You want to make your own own website or you want to make your own website everything about you or you want to make your global presence so you want to develop web pages and once you developed your web pages by using any software like html by using html or graphic graphical uh, software which converts that one to html so once you made this one in your computer now you have to Keep this one in such a place from where users, users means other people can access what you already did. That is what I am asking. Because your machine is your machine. You can open it. You can open. You can see it. But if you want others also to see what you did, then you have to make your machine as a server so that they can enter into your machine by one address so your machine must have one address so as you know most of the machine standalone machine is having the address that is 127.0.0.1 this is the address of every machine in the world and this is also known as local host this is also known as local host now once you if you want to make your machine your machine means your computer not machine here you say your laptop your laptop as a server so then first and foremost thing is that you have to purchase a static ip static this is very important thing. Static IP means one IP which will be set up in your laptop where you can, so anyone, the IP, static IP, static IP means or rather dedicated IP. This is static or rather you can say dedicated IP. This static and dedicated IP can be purchased from any vendor by googling, by, 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 by going to the Google. You can search that one dedicated IP. So they will charge near about 3000 rupees per month or like that. And you will get one IP. Then you have to install one web server software in your machine and then you have to use that IP for your web server. And then anyone who will be logging with that IP can come to your machine, but not if your machine is rather um, shut down, in a state of shutdown state, then no one can access that one. You have to keep your machine on always and that's why you see the web servers are never, no way, no web server, actually the big web servers, or robust web servers are never been, never been shut down. These are always kept on 365 days, 24 hours, 7 days, every time these are on because Otherwise, people cannot log into the server itself. So one thing is that you have to procure a static IP or dedicated IP. Then only 
you can make your laptop as a server because by that time this will only be the local host this will be your server will be like that http you can even s and then you can go for like um, https dot uh, h this oh, is www dot then you see jb dot org so <clears throat> now once you will set that one in your laptop then just you forward this address to anyone and they can log into your machine and from your laptop they can get some material but you have to keep material over there but this is very much travel something and people are not using this one too much so that's for why people are always going for the remote thing they are rather purchasing shared hosting s h a r e d shared hosting or rather cloud hosting or rather vpn hosting or dedicated hosting dedicated hosting so these are the four different types of uh, ways by which you can make your own web server not in your machine in some machine in a machine which you do not know where it is but might be this is actually in australia might be this is in um usa or rather it is in india itself so you can purchase the space as well as you can purchase the webs address also and shared hosting this is the less pricey very 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 less price so our um, sites rather dls and view as well as my site i am using this one shared hosting but shared hosting is some bit of slow because here the resources of that machine where it is hosted the resource of that machine the hard disk ram everything is shared by more than one client because lot of people are rather been given that machine and a place from that particular machine that is known as shared hosting and cloud hosting is rather the same type of hosting but here you can ask them any time if you want you can ask them um, increase my space increase my ram increase my processor so this is rather the cloud hosting so here you can say that one this is the scalable s c a l a b l e scalability and vpn hosting is virtual private network hosting that is here this is a private network a kind of networking which is given for a peer to peer connectivity with a small group like militaries they can use this one vpn hosting and the dedicated hosting is one full machine will be given to you not your own machine somewhere one full machine with full uh you see the processor the ram everything will be given to you it will be dedicated to you and you know this is the costliest costliest uh cost yes costliest uh venture for this one hosting mostly these dedicated hostings are uh, always been taken by or always been by the hps or big companies big corporates they are having their own sites hp and other they have their own machines or but these are the dedicated hosting so if you do not have the machine you can take rent this one dedicated hosting from other um, hosting providers and but this is what the shared hosting so most of the cases people are using this one that is a shared hosting okay so now that is what i was saying this one uh, that is from current slide okay
packets is over this one is over this one is over yes and then security we talked about this one now web server to web server communication In this one what is this see this one is user placing order and this order this is the merchant web server amazon okay now it is going to the payment gateway it is payment gateway hdfc or sbi and now it is going to the merchant's bank account then bank is rather verifying this one the bank response is coming to this server again from that way payment gateway to the merchant server and you will get that one yes you have successfully placed the order so this is what web server to web server because merchant web server and the payment gateway server and the bank's web server these three things are different web servers they do not have any relationship with one to another because amazon's web server is somewhere different different places and payment gateway you can choose any payment gateway like credit card you can choose payment gateway like bildex payment gateway like you see paypal so they have their own servers and but the thing is that merchants must have must have the bank account so that payment gateway can process that one So then they will give you the response so this is what web server to web server communication and web server technologies we already talked and this is web server now what is the web server it is a server computer that hosts website it enables us to deliver web pages or services like email blog users on the internet it consists of a server computer that runs a server os and a web software installed on it for providing services over the internet so it is having a server so it is having one server os and a web software can you name any server os operating system can you tell me the name of any server operating system server operating system anyone no sir i'll go a little bit more what can i read linux you see l i n u x linux linux is a server operating system unix is a server operating system windows nt is a server server windows nt is a server operating system but not windows uh, 10 or like that they are they are desktop operating system server operating system are the robust operating system which can which can take the user query more than one user query at the same time that is which can handle the different requests so as for example you know when it is at the time of Uh, you see the results, academic results or high secondary results. You will see that on the very day, most of the cases the server crashes. And you see the you know the last few days back, whenever the Radhe released, the Radhe released. You know the G server crashed. The G server crashed what? We at a single point of time, so many users try to log into the G server. There is a G Plex. and the server was not at all ready to accept all those requests so it couldn't handle and its memory clogged and ultimately died so after that g restored that one so that is known as the server operating system so server operating system and a web software uh, now see this web software is rather a misnomer 
that is you can say that is the web software means web server software there is server os as well as the web server software and you know web server software can you tell me the name of one web server software jaydi no sir shaki re shaki ha ah? oh pavitra sharma gone okay so web server do you hey, know apache is a key yes yes apache is one web server this is the apache web server apache tomcat so these are the different web servers so apart from your usual operating system you have required that one too ha ki ho chale ha hello Mm hmm. Okay. Mm. So this is what the Apache. So Apache web server, one web server is required. Okay. Now next. Now see the data center. A data center looks like this. Okay. Now I am showing you the real data center. Uh. see this one this is the google data center hi i'm stephanie long and i work for google cloud well i can talk all day about cloud security physical security at a google data center is still pretty new to me So today I'm on a mission to learn all about it by taking an inside look at the systems in place that protect customer data at a typical Google data center. Let's go. Now, I've been told there are six layers of security here. Security layer 1 refers to the property boundaries and that includes signage and fencing. But things really start to get interesting when it comes to layer 2, also known as the secure perimeter. And that includes the main entrance gate which I am pulling up to right now. Hey, how's it going? So layer 2 has a lot of security features, ranging from smart fencing to overlapping cameras to 24/7 guard controls and more. I'm on my way to meet some experts who are going to show me how it all works. Hi Jeff. Hi Stephanie. How are you? So I just passed the main gate and I saw guards and cameras, but what are some things that I didn't see? Yeah, there's actually a lot of technology and operations going on behind the scene. So from the time that you're on site, we know that you're here and we're able to do correlation analysis of where you've been. We have guards in vehicles. We have some guards on foot. There's also the vehicle crash barrier that's designed to stop a fully loaded truck from crashing through the front entrance. Breaking three. Can you tell me more about what's unique about the fencing? This particular fence is an anti-climb fence. It's also equipped with fiber. The technology tells us if someone's near the fence or touches the fence. So we use thermal cameras and standard cameras. So we're able to see video footage at night just as clearly as we can during the day. <laughs> Welcome to layer 3, building access. But just so you know, I am still nowhere near the data center floor. That's a few more layers deep. Let's head inside. Stephanie, yeah. so you've gotten through the gate. Um, you've come in, come into our secure lobby. You have your card, and we know that that's you, but if someone happens to lose their card, what we want to make sure is that it's actually Stephanie who's shown up. And with iris scan, we can authenticate that it's actually you along with your ID. Okay. Get this in. One thing that's a little hard to get used to when you visit a data center is for secure areas only one person is allowed to patch through a door at a time.
Layer 4 includes the Security Operations Center, or SOC, a hive of activity that is monitoring the data center 24-7, 365 days a year. So it sounds like we've been keeping them very busy today. Yes, yes you have. Um, so the doors, the cameras, the badge readers, the iris scan, everything is connected here. This, this is the brains of the security system. So if there's anything out of the ordinary happening, they have to be able to pick that up. Interesting fact about layer five, the data center floor. Less than 1% of Googlers ever get to set foot in here. So right now, I'm feeling kind of special. This is truly a as needed only access area, meaning that only the technicians and engineers that have to be there to maintain, upgrade, or repair the equipment are ever allowed there. And do Googlers or anyone have access to the data? We have access to the devices, but the data at rest is encrypted, and our customers can issue and keep their own encryption keys. And we do this because protecting the privacy and the security of our users' data is our highest priority. The mysterious layer six, where disks are erased and destroyed, and the fewest number of people are allowed to enter. Drives that need to be retired from the data center floor come into this room through a secure two-way locker system, which means that only technicians assigned to this room can pull them from that locker to either erase or destroy them. All right, welcome to the crusher room. Um, so at this point, we have scanned the hard drive and the software has told us that we need to destroy it. Can we see it in action? Back up. All right, I'll stay back here. <laughs> So got this one. So this is what the data center is. You know, what is the data center? So data center is on Google. So you see one guy was pulling one disk. So all those are the hard disks. And you do not know how many hard disks are rather kept in Google. And after a period of time, whenever the software is saying that one, that hard drive is to be destroyed. These are rather being destroyed. That is EOS management. So that is what the data center. So each and every rack, these are connected. Each and every rack, there are the hard disks. And these are connected with one another. And by this way, Google is storing the data. So got the point? Clear? And I think we should stop here up to data center because we have lot of other things are there also or oh, near about 56 slides and we are on 19. So now with this one, if you have other questions, so you can ask, otherwise I'll stop here.